Hi Taurus, welcome to your November 2016 love reading. And uh, I'm doing a new spread or using a new spread that I found on Pinterest just uh, yesterday actually. And it's funny because I don't have it in front of me and I remember like most of the positions but one of them I'm not really sure so it's going to be kind of interesting. I hope I'll be able to see later on but I'm not going to look it up again. And uh, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. I'll put this closer. I don't think it's. Oh boy. Okay, I'm going to pick another card because the outcome is a little bit. Okay, it's interesting. Pick. Picked an extra card because the outcome card isn't a card that I typically associate with outcomes in terms of, you know, being something that you can really look at and, I don't know, be inspired by. You know, it's a card. Well, I'll talk about it when I get there. It's a card of restriction, and I think that whenever I get that card, it's like kind of a caution that, you know, maybe you do need to really look at something very carefully. Um, the, the past position is the Page of Wands. So what I do is I look at the past position and then the current position, um, which is a strength card. I'm not going to hold that up right this second because it's a little bit um, hard to do with all these cards. Well, maybe I can. I just, I don't know, this is like, now let's look at this. So on the right we have the past and now we have the strength card. So right away I think of uh, some Taurus people are involved with Leos, um, you know, if we're talking about people, actual people, pages can be actual people. And uh, the thing about the page of wands is it can indicate a new relationship okay and it can indicate an enthusiastic relationship where there's a lot of passion versus um and that's that that would be particularly true if you were to get with a fire sign a person and that element is featured when i pull that card with the wands being connected to fire so that kind of, you know, astrological pairing up with a Taurus can generate within you maybe a passionate response that you don't typically have. If you were with a Cancer individual or, you know, any kind of like a Virgo, you might be a lot more practical dealing with, um, you know, just your home and your basic... Um, life, maybe family issues, but with a sign like Leo, there's kind of this uh, romance, uh, you know, the kind of the fantasy that that we associate with romance, and that can throw you into a whirlwind, and um, for some people, it could be that you were involved in some kind of an affair, and um, it caused you, maybe it didn't... Um, it didn't uh, kind of pay off the way you wanted to, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily the case uh, because a strength card really doesn't mean that you are trying to hold on uh, because something bad happened. Sometimes I think it, it indicates that you've come from a struggle, but sometimes it can be that you were able to withstand uh, maybe a waiting period because that's kind of what's 
represented by how you saw yourself in this situation, um, that you were patient. And this is something that Taurus people are patient. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is associated with Taurus because it's a farmer's card and you're associated with, land, uh, you know, like uh, farming, uh, you know, Taurus, the second house and the pentacles are the earth. So this is about patience and kind of um, assessing something, maybe waiting for something. And so, yeah, I could see you if you were, um, it also could be that the page of wands could be some kind of a message that you received regarding someone that you were interested in. And, but it's like, whatever it is, whether it's somebody that you meet or somebody that you, maybe it's on the internet where you're kind of going back and forth. I feel like it's something that you are able to feel a sense of excitement about it, it generates within you enthusiasm and it makes you feel like um you know you can you can do it you know and um uh, actually you know what you learned from this situation is that there is another that you are capable of starting over I think because this is a card of starting you know afresh and it can be with anything related to a passionate activity so it is associated with creative projects and careers but also in the love arena and it could be a very um, as I say there's kind of this sense of really feeling excitement so you know what it also kind of tells me is that some of you may have felt um, that you were in a rut or that you could never love again and um, this kind of you know showed you that that was possible and so now you're feeling a lot stronger and that that kind of yeah so maybe you were in some kind of a negative pattern in the past that made you question yourself um, it's interesting I'm, I'm thinking about the month of November in terms of astrology there will be a full moon in your sign on the 14th, and there's also going to be, um, as the month begins, you're going to be coming off of a new moon in Scorpio on the 30th of October. So this is in your seventh house of relationships. So um, it could very well be that that's uh, maybe it could even be because it's relationships that are more committed partnerships so it's like either getting married or getting engaged moving in together making that commitment and maybe some of you we had a rocky kind of a time for, for a while there where it was touch and go uh, you know you did have you did have Saturn go through your your um, seventh house a couple of years ago so for some of you your marriages might have been tested and maybe they kind of fell by the wayside but maybe there was something left and you've kind of salvaged something within the last couple of years I mean that's always possible the other thing too is Mars going it when it went retrograde in the summer it dipped back into Scorpio so it went it went into that seventh house and it kind of may have reignited some old battles that some of you may have felt and you know that puts stress on your relationship but now that would uh, indicate that you're like entering a new chapter in that but for some of you this may be a totally new relationship and maybe you were scarred from a relationship in the uh, from the past and maybe you thought you would never love again you know Taurus is a fixed sign you tend to kind of really glom on to ideas, especially if your Mercury is also in Taurus, which a lot of times it will be, very close to the sun. Um, and just that, you know, no, this is how it is. You know, that's how you get a reputation for being stubborn. But it's not just in behavior. It's also in your mindset. And you have to kind of fight against that tendency to just really... Um, you know set things into stone about your belief system because it will if you know maybe you don't believe in the law of attraction but I do and it will you know demonstrate itself to you if you think that 
you know, certain things are the way that they are, they will tend to show up that way, I feel. And so as soon as you make that shift, then all these other good things represented by the top row can come in. So um, the advice is the lover's card. Hey, that's pretty self-explanatory. But really, you know, we see the, the nudity. So what does the nudity represent? Well, it's kind of like the eighth house, I feel like, in astrology. I can't get away from astrology, and I apologize for that. The seventh house is the commitment, but that's almost like the external, you know, song and dance and rituals, and even the verbal contract. The eighth house is the actual, you know, getting in deep with that person and bearing your soul. The, the people in the lover's card are bearing their bodies. Um, and so they're showing themselves without clothing in that material sense. But it's kind of, I'm, I'm very sure that you could say it's symbolic for um, showing your, your uh, deepest self to another person and kind of not keeping that under wraps. Because if you want, if you really want to have the most committed and, you know, I don't want to say intense because I don't really like intensity that much, but um, what's a good word that means that authentic is a good word, authentic relationship, but also something that is substantial and where you feel accepted, you know, regardless, you know, of whatever has happened to you and what continues to plague you, then you have to be willing to trust another person on that level. And of course, you know, not everybody can be trusted on that level. Some people are not developed enough to be able to appreciate you telling them that. They may, it may make them feel uncomfortable and they may actually insult you and, and kind of play it off because they're just um, not okay with vulnerability. So that's something that also has to be acknowledged. But then again, if you're ready to be with somebody, if you're ready to merge soul to soul, you may not be, you know, um, that person may not be right for you if they cannot appreciate that, if they do not have that ability to connect with you on that level. It all depends on how you feel about it, I guess. And, you know, for some people, it may be a time of consummating the relationship. Maybe you have been kind of, uh, you know, dating and um, you feel that now you, you really are in love uh, or at least, you know, committed to a certain point and that you want to take the relationship to the next level. It could always mean that. Now, this was the, <laughs> the card that I'm not sure... I, um, I'll have to check, but it doesn't matter because I'm intending this card to be outside influences. This is a nine of uh, wands, and um, you see the vigilance of this person. Um, this could be the other person for sure. It's somebody other than you. And so this, again, see, we're getting this fire energy. So very strongly coming in, someone who is, if not a Leo, an Aries, or a Sagittarius. My bet would be less with the Sagittarius, more with the Leo or the Aries. And um, the other person could also be someone who has their has a wall up and you're trying to penetrate that wall. And maybe this is why you're getting this card because maybe you're trying to reach them and they are not they have trust issues. They have, you know, I was going to say paranoia, but that's kind of the extreme version. You know, just on the casual version, a sense of a little bit of uh, wariness of what's happening. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's something to watch out for because if this is the partner, then it could suggest that 
you are going to have a challenge to get close to them. And even if you have, you know, just recently started a relationship with this person, if this keeps up indefinitely, you may realize that that other person is going to be hard to get to know on a deep level. And it, it may end up where you will not be able to reach them. But that's not necessarily going to be true at all because, and this is one thing that's very important to understand, is that sometimes people do take time to warm up. And um, I think like even this is kind of showing that you're waiting and you're trying to assess whether or not this relationship is something that is worth investing in. Now, this if this is not your partner, the nine of wands um could it could indicate that this person is involved with somebody else and they are kind of um feeling you know that sense of defensiveness maybe they're feeling like their home is being threatened by an outside affair so this could be speaking to any you know possible infidelity on the part of that other person and that it's making their spouse very um feeling like very protective of the home or their family and so it's the the point that i'm trying to make is that there is this kind of thing swirling around of suspicion or of anticipation of maybe some kind of um, drama happening maybe they have left their marriage and they're anticipating that there's going to be a bitter custody custody battle or I, I didn't mean to say that but probably you know that might be part of it but um you know a divorce situation now um as i said i picked two cards one of them is the eight of swords so this could be the this is in terms of outcome this could be that you are not seeing something here and that this would be particularly if it's uh if you if you suspect um that the person may be cheating and they're they're pretending that they are um single to you the way that you would be able to do this is by just kind of gauging their behavior if they're telling you if they're making a lot of excuses why they can't come over at perfectly reasonable times you know there's a typical you know, litany of excuses that people who are cheating give. Maybe they see you at very odd times. And if you're blindfolded, you are going to be, you know, leading yourself down a a path of delusion. So this will obviously not apply to some of you. Uh, this is more likely to apply to those people who are dealing with an outside influence that, you know, is generating suspicion. Um, and I, I feel that it's very hard for a person to lie about being married. I, and not that I have an experience with that, but I just feel that usually there are, are red flags and it's, it's simply a matter of seeing reality as it is, not how you want it to be, where you can really, you know, um, cut things off at a pass if they're not working. And um, the other thing too is that this person feels like they can't move, that they, they, they have nowhere to go. So the other thing, if you are involved with somebody currently, and maybe this is the person that caused hardship in your life, so this would be a Gemini... Uh, a Libra or Aquarius individual. If that, if you had a person in your life with either those Sun or, I guess you could say Moon, but particularly Rising, because that shows up really quickly, really, you know, much so. It's an image that we project the Rising sign. So the Rising sign may really show up, and they may have an Air sign as a Rising sign, um, or a Sun sign, or um, they just have an airy type of a nature, an intellectually based nature, that person may kind of crop up. And this, this, even though this may not be you because it's an outside influence, it might just be the, the, 
the energy that's surrounding where you feel this sense of impending doom that this person is coming back in your life and so rather than um, having learned helplessness um, this card is maybe giving you a better way of handling it which is the three of cups and you see that there are other people involved this is about enlisting your support system not trying to um, you know handle this on your own if there's somebody who's very toxic who's trying to come back into your to your life but also it could just be that you are you know a serial relationship person so you go from one serial monogamist you go from one long-term relationship to another which I could totally see a Taurus person doing you never process what's happening and then you know you, you jump right back into the fray and you know some of those loose ends like a, an old lover coming back never really get resolved because it's so fresh so definitely if you have been through a lot of emotional tug of war or you know you feel worn out because of something that happened in terms of a past rela toxic relationship that you got away from then even if there's somebody new that has come onto the picture maybe you're just talking you know maybe the page of wands is just you talking online and you haven't really met in person yet and you're just kind of biding your time um, that would probably be better that you know you give yourself the freedom to be with people on a platonic level before you go into something very deeply because maybe you still have loose ends that need to be tied up and it's going to complicate the current you know the new relationship and may, maybe even scare the other person away if they think there's something you know some kind of a person who is going to be you know problematic that still wants you in their life and they probably only want you because they want to control you it's probably not anything to do with them actually changing or them actually um, you know learning to appreciate you it's just the power issue and they might Another thing, too, is a person like that, they may play mind games where they try to manipulate you on an intellectual level. You know, a water sign person, like a Pisces person or a Cancer person, might try to manipulate you emotionally, try to tug at your heartstrings, whereas an air sign or an air-based person may try to kind of distort what you say and try to kind of make you seem like you're in the wrong and make you feel guilty that way because you you know you're not seeing you're not thinking the way they want you to think and so just be aware that that may be coming up but yeah um this is a card the three of cups is a card of joy or you know in camaraderie particularly um it's a very social card it's a very happy card so you know and lighthearted. so maybe that's just what you need in your life and i think that you do have uh, a promising new love waiting in the wings but maybe it's just that transitional period for you that needs to kind of play itself out so Taurus I hope you enjoyed this if you'd like a private reading there's a link to my website below otherwise have a great November